Welcome fellow bookworms to Riz Den. My name is Whitney and I have another Throwback Thursday for you. Today, of course, we're continuing on with my horse obsession that's going to carry us through, you know, February or January into February. But today we are going to be talking about the Saddle Club. I had two of these books. There's well over a hundred, I think. Um, I'm not quite sure how many. Um, but I know it's over a hundred anyway, so we're going to be talking about the two that I had on my shelf. And I also rewatched the television show, the first season of that, so that was a lot of fun. We're going to be talking about that as well. Before I jump into these books, though, just a reminder, we did start our book of the month back up, so we started reading Lady Boss here this past Monday and the first set of discussion questions will be up this coming Monday. I absolutely love doing book of the month. Um, it was nice to have the break for December and I think I'm going to do that again next year just you know with everything that that goes on in December. Um, it was very helpful to have that break but um, we are starting that back up and so the first set of discussion questions will be up this coming Monday. I hope you will participate. Um, I absolutely love it. I think you get a lot more out of a book with the discussion questions. At least I do. Uh, and obviously you can take the discussion questions as seriously as you want. You know, it's more just prompts to kind of get you thinking about the questions themselves and what your thoughts are than, you know, you needing to actually sit down and do a full-fledged answer or anything like that. So hopefully you'll participate in that. Series Saturday is going to be starting back up as well. Those aren't going to be regular, so just keep an eye out for those videos. I'll give you an update. As I continue to make my way through the Dresden Files series, we're currently on book six that I'll be starting probably sometime this week, honestly. And what else? We have a lot of bonus videos um, in addition to our regular series, so definitely please make sure you are subscribed. You do hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on a thing. We have videos that are going to be coming out about the 25 Days of Book Miss books. Um, the compilation videos are already out. I have a video coming out where I rank them from the ones I'm anticipating enjoying the least to the ones I'm anticipating enjoying the most. And then of course I'll talk about them as I read them and, and I'm going to redo um, the video and rank them from the ones I actually enjoyed the least to the ones I actually enjoyed the most and it'll be interesting to see how well I kind of know myself based on just reading synopsis and how close I got um, as far as the list goes. So really excited to jump into those books. I'm still making my way through my ABC author challenge books, trying to complete that challenge. I have all the authors. I just need to read the books. Um, right now I'm working on Tenants of Time by Thomas Flanagan, which is a huge book. And so it's going to take me a little while. So hopefully there'll be an update video soon if I can work my way through it. Actually, so far, I think I'm on chapter four now, four or five. I can't remember if I just started chapter four or if I just finished it. Um, but I was surprised. I'm actually enjoying it and I'm following along better than I thought I was. I, I would. I was very intimidated by that book uh, when I first picked it out. My husband actually encouraged me to get it. And the whole purpose of the challenge is really to try new authors and new books and new genres and such. So I really am glad that he encouraged me to pick up that book. And so far, I'm enjoying it. I'm still a bit intimidated because I'm not very far through, but I, I have more confidence now that I've started it and I am able to follow along somewhat. So, uh, and another bonus read, I got a new book for Christmas, so that video should be coming out soon. And I'm also gonna do a video where I talk about my 2022 goals. So, um, Lots of stuff coming up, and then, of course, my regular series are resuming as well. So, um, like I said, please do subscribe, hit the bell notification, and then give this video a like while you're at it. And while you're at it, ignore my hair. Uh, it's at that awkward length. It's just kind of doing whatever it wants to. Um, I try to brush it. I try to wet it down, and it's just it's going to do what it, what it wants. So, But I think I've rambled on enough, so let's go ahead and talk about The Saddle Club. So these books, I was a little late to the game. These are more for like preteens. I don't think I picked up the books or watched the show um, until I was, I think I picked up the books when I was like in my mid-teens. 
And then I watched the show, um, probably when I was in my late teens. I didn't sit and watch the show completely through. I would catch episodes of it here and there as I was able to. But when the books came out, like these ones were 1999. So I was definitely around the right age when they first came out. I just kind of got to them a little bit later. I remember I picked up these books after we moved. Um, my mom worked for a reading cow horse trainer. And originally she had like a boarding facility, but then she wanted to focus on the training aspect. And so she moved in and we went along with her. And we used to have to go to like this feed store. Um, it was like a feed tax store. And they had a little section for books. And that's where I picked these up. Like I remember browsing them and my mom would let me pick up books. And that's where I got these. I also got some of my other series there as well. That's where I started reading those. Um, so even though I was a little late to the game, you know, like I said, they're more aimed, especially the television show, it, it's preteen. Um, so I was definitely a little late to the game as far as like the show, but the books, I think, you know, preteen to, to teen is fine. Um, but yeah, I think. Rereading them, are they the greatest books in the world? No, but they're definitely enjoyable. Like, I did enjoy revisiting them. It wasn't a chore to read them or anything like that. I definitely enjoyed this one a lot more than I did this one, and I'll explain why in a second, but I prefer the show for sure over the books. Um, I think the books are fun. But the show, I don't know. I just really enjoyed the characters on the show. And I do think the show captured, you know, obviously these books take place after, you know, these, it's 87 and 88. So the show's starting at the beginning. And I think they stayed true to the personalities of the characters. They have all, all the characters that are in the books are in the show. Um, as far as I can tell, you know, obviously, like I said, that was the beginning and then these are later. Um, and it also has, you know, the horses that these girls have in the books. You see them, how they got them in the show. So I think as far as I can tell, it stays pretty close to the books, which I really like, especially when you do have a series that is so popular. It's nice when it stays pretty true to the books. Um, and so I really enjoyed the show. Like I said, I knew kind of all these little spoilers because I was reading the books um, while I was watching the show. So I kind of already knew like, oh, this is going to happen because it's in this book. So I know that's going to happen. Um, so I really enjoyed that as well. But definitely enjoyed this one, Show Jumper over saddle, Side Saddle. Um, one thing that annoyed me, though, is the two different... Um, styles of the cover this one's more of an illustration and this one's more of a photograph so that was kind of annoying but basically if you're not familiar with saddle club you have these three girls you have lisa which actually i'll show you who's who on this one so you have lisa here and she's more kind of reserved she's the most novice of them all kind of reserved uh, gets very anxious, very much a perfectionist, things like that. And then you have Stevie here in the middle, and she is kind of outspoken. She's very tomboyish. She likes to play jokes. Um, and she's just kind of very impulsive as well. Uh, and then you have Carol who here who just, like, she kind of gets stuck on horses and she's like information central essentially um she's probably the most advanced of the three um and kind of knows the most uh and so yeah those, that's the three characters and they form the saddle club which is like a small group off of like their pony club which is horse wise um which takes they have their horses and the club is at Pine Hollow Stables. So that's the those are the main characters. You also have Max who owns the stables and his mom. And then you have like a head stable hand, Red, um, and then a wide range of characters. You also have Veronica D'Angelo, who's like the mean girl 
of the series. Um, so, you know, the characters are a lot of fun. I like how you have the different um, personalities and such, for sure. And so in Show Jumper, you have Lisa. It's mainly following Lisa. And she's going to her first, like, big elite show. And she's going to be writing Samson, who I think this is his first show. Um, which doesn't really make sense because you would start him off at, like, smaller shows. So I'm not really sure if that's actually the case, but that's kind of the way it, it's, they make it seem, is that this is his first show, um, and it's her first big show. Uh, and she kind of makes a mistake with the color jacket she chooses. Her mom, you know, is all excited because, um, it's kind of a more elite show, and her mom's not really into the horse thing, but she is into society, essentially. Um, and so her mom's really excited and wants to buy her a whole new outfit for the show. Kind of convinces her to buy a pink jacket. It's, you know, obviously red, but they call it a pink jacket. And she doesn't really, I mean, she kind of knows, but then she figures it'll be okay. Like, she thinks that's more of a general guideline that only certain writers wear that jacket than like a hard and fast rule so she figures it'll be okay but it ends up you know people are talking about it and so she does actually really well her and Samson both do really well in the first round they make it through but then she really suffers you know her confidence suffers you know because she hears people talking about the jacket and then people are talking about how um the only reason she made it through was because of Samson, and you have, you know, the mean girl Veronica, and then some other, like, snooty girls that are actually friends with Veronica, of course. And so, she really suffers, her confidence suffers, but she's scared to talk to her friends about it for whatever reason, and so she's just kind of suffering in silence, and she's not talking about to them about it, um, and so, you know, she's already kind of a nervous, anxious person, and a perfectionist, and so now she's, you know, having to face another round while, you know, struggling internally. And so that's the whole premise of the book. And then, you know, obviously the end, she's going to have to overcome that somehow. Um, which I won't spoil what happens just in case you want to read it uh, yourself. But pretty enjoyable. Uh, and what happens, I liked it was a lot more realistic. And I think it was a good lesson for, you know, um, young, young children that may be reading this, I think it had a very, very good lesson in there, because what happens, you know, isn't necessarily, like, the, the optimal ending, um, and so I really enjoyed that aspect, for sure. And then we come to Side Saddle, and this one, I just, I enjoyed it, because it's an enjoyable, read but the whole premise of it I did not enjoy at all so this one's following Stevie and of course she's the tomboy kind of outspoken um not afraid to say her her mind uh, you know speak her mind or anything like that well a new girl comes in to the stable um and she rides side saddle she's very feminine she has like pink clothing that she wears and such and Stevie just, it gets under her skin, especially when she sees her friends really connecting with this girl and then her boyfriend kind of flirting with this girl. And it just really gets under her skin. And she knows like on a certain level that's not very rational. And so she decides she's going to be more elegant and feminine. And I can understand somewhat the premise, just the way it was carried out wasn't very re realistic because it wasn't just that she was dressing different and dressing nicer and more feminine. Her whole personality changed. Like, she wasn't fighting with her brothers. She was doing laundry and homework and getting all this done. And it's like, I didn't think that was very realistic. Like, I could see her trying to be more feminine, but to completely change her whole personality and go from kind of a slacker and a slob to, you know, uh, doing all her chores and, like, being the perfect model of perfection. I just, I did not see that. Um, and so it basically just follows her and she's kind of having to 
overcome that and overcome this jealousy she's feeling and then also her, her dislike for this girl who has done nothing but be nice to her. Um, and so she's having to realize that there's more to her than just the way she looks and the way she talks and, and acts and such. Like, that's just who she is, but at the heart of it, there's more to her than that as well. And she is actually a very nice girl. Um, so it's kind of just a lesson. Again, I think there's a good lesson there, like, not to judge a book by its cover and then not to let jealousy get the best of you either and to stay true to yourself as well. So I think there are several good lessons in this one. It's just the way it was done was a little bit unrealistic to me, which is what I didn't enjoy. Um, but in the end, you know, she kind of, you know, figures out like this girl, you know, I was, I was being irrational and this girl, there's, you know, really more to her. She doesn't know it all. Um, she's not perfect. Um, and I have my own strengths as well, you know? And so I did like that and her and her boyfriend kind of figure it out and, and everything like that. But, but yeah, I think, I don't know, just how it was done was a little bit over the top. So I didn't enjoy this one quite as much as this one. And like I said, I definitely enjoyed the TV series a lot more. Um, I love seeing those characters brought to life for sure. So that's it for the books. Next week, we're continuing on, of course, with the horse obsession. I'm actually going to be reading four books. All these are slightly shorter. Um, so I'm going to be reading all of those and then talking about them next week. And then I think there's like three or four more like um, standalone books that I'm going to be reading. And then I have three series that I'm going to be finishing up my horse obsession. Um, and then after that, there's not too many more as far as my own personal childhood books. I have several that are dog related that I'll be jumping into. And then, you know, sometime in this new year, this these throwback Thursdays are definitely going to be more of a true kids corner. Um, I'm not going to be reading, you know, my, the ones that were personal to my childhood, but I'm still going to be picking up books aimed at children, reading them, and kind of giving my thoughts. But as far as the Saddle Club goes, um, very enjoyable. I definitely think more preteen age, uh, anywhere, you know, from, I would say 10 to 14, um, would be probably where the age, age rate lies. I uh, can't talk. Um, and I know there's another series she does, Pine Hollow, where the, the characters are a little bit older. Um, so it's definitely books, you know, that start off young and you can, they can, the children can kind of grow with them, if that makes sense. And I think they're enjoyable enough, you know, if you were one to read with your child, these ones would be enjoyable enough that it would be fun for you as well, especially if you enjoy horses. Um, if you don't enjoy horses, you know, again, probably not for you. Um, but I do think, you know, there's that friendship and those life lessons in there as well. Um, that's not just for horse lovers, even though that's the main focus for sure. So I can't talk. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye. Bye.